Hey guys, welcome back to John's Fantasy Football Podcast. I am John. Thank you guys for coming over to YouTube. I can't believe it's already the end of week two. The season's already going by so fast and we've only gone through two weeks, but we haven't seen that many touchdowns. I don't know if you guys seen the stat, but this is the least amount of passing touchdowns through week two in the last like five years at least. It's crazy. There's been so many injuries. You guys are probably wondering, what do I do, John? I've got so many injuries, so many question marks on my fantasy team, and I don't know what to do. And you're in the right place. Thank you for coming to YouTube for Dorm Debate Podcast. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because I come out with videos every week. So does the Dorm Debate crew. We have great podcasts each week that you guys need to tune into. Hopefully you guys came over from TikTok, but if you didn't, um, definitely go over and follow our TikTok because we post great content there. I go live every Sunday morning. And also, if you guys want my personalized advice, head over to our Patreon. The link is in our bio on all of our platforms platforms. And that's where you can get all of my thoughts. I give you guys trade options. I give you guys personalized personalized advice, reviewing your teams, helping you make trades and improve your team. Look, it's only week two. The season's not over yet. Even if you lose again next week and you're 0-3, the season's not over, guys. We're, there's still a lot of fun to be had. There's still a lot of moves to make on your fantasy teams to try to win your league. And even if you're 1-1 one one right now or 0-2, the season's not even close to being over. You can definitely come back and I'm happy that you're here with me today because what I've got for you today is panic or patience. I'm going to give you two quarterbacks, two running backs, four receivers, and three tight ends, and I'm going to tell you if I would panic on them or just be patient because fantasy football, it's all about being patient about when your guys are going to explode. We just saw Marvin Harrison Jr. in week one, one catch on four targets for four yards, and everybody freaked out. And then in week two, four catches, 130 yards, two touchdowns, and everybody's happy. So you guys are probably here thinking, John, you got to tell me, what are the players that I should panic on? And what are the players that I should just be patient? Because I know that they're going to soon produce. And some of those players might be some of your top picks in your fantasy draft. So I'm going to start with the two quarterbacks. The first quarterback is Anthony Richardson. He was being touted as a top five quarterback this entire preseason. And he hasn't really pounded out that way. Yeah, the first game was good. He chucked a couple deep bombs to Alec Pierce and he got a rushing touchdown as well. But in week two, he only had about 12 fantasy points. Now, he does have some tough matchups. He did have some tough matchups. But the thing is, he has a high floor with that rushing upside. So even last week in week two, when he threw three interceptions, he still had about 36 yards rushing, which counteracted two of those interceptions. And he still ended up with about 12 fantasy points, which is bad. But that's about what Jared Goff got. And yeah, Richardson should be a lot better than Goff. But at the same time, Richardson's floor is about 12 points. Hopefully he's going to be getting more like 18 to 20 on a weekly basis. And Michael Pittman Jr., who I'm not going to talk about later in this video, but I would also be a little bit patient with him because this offense, keep in mind that Richardson only played a couple games last season. So he's still getting used to the NFL. He's basically a rookie. And once this offense gets into the rhythm and they start throwing the ball more, it will get a little bit better. It's only week two and Jonathan Taylor hasn't got going yet. So they haven't got that play action run game going and play action pass. So definitely be a little bit patient on this Colts offense. I have Anthony Richardson in one of my leagues and I'm holding on to him for right now. I would still honestly rather have Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, or Jordan Love if you want to trade Richardson for any of those guys right now. Or maybe if you trade him for Love, you wait another week or two see how Richardson does against the Bears this week. It's a good matchup, so he should do well. The next quarterback I'm going to talk about, I mentioned him before, Jared Goff. Now, Goff had 12.4 points in week one, 10.8 in week two, and that's behind Daniel Jones and Bo Nix in terms of fantasy production this season, which is embarrassing for Jared Goff, especially considering the weapons that he has on offense. Jamison Williams is breaking out. I mean, I'm on Ross St. Brown. Where's Sam Laporta been? I'll be talking about him in a little bit, but the thing that I like about Goff is he plays a lot better at home and indoors. And the thing is, he only plays three outdoor games all season and none until week nine at Green Bay. And when you think about at Green Bay, having it in week nine, which is just the beginning of November, that's actually not bad because, you know, Green Bay could be a lot worse. Usually they play Green Bay in Green Bay a lot later in the season. So it seems like Goff will have a lot of these indoor games, a lot of these good weather games. And I'm not really worried because the Lions, I think, is going to be are going to be one of the top teams in the NFC. And Goff will be a big beneficiary. 
beneficiary because especially Jamison Williams is now coming into his role. Laporta hasn't even been used. Gibbs out of the backfield. They've had a couple tough matchups, but be patient on Jared Goff. And I even like him as a backup quarterback if you have him in some of your leagues. Now I'm going to move on to running backs. There's a lot of running backs to panic about, but I'm going to talk about two that I would panic about. Zamir White is one of them, guys. I didn't draft him in any of my leagues, and I told you guys pre-draft not to draft him because I'm not confident in this Raiders offense being able to move down the field, and I don't think defenses fully respect Gardner Minshew, which is why a lot of them are trying to stop. A lot of the defenses are just trying to stop Zamir White. Now, they play the Panthers this week. They're at home. So if you have Rashad, uh, if you have Zamir White, you got to hold them for at least this week. If he can't produce against the Panthers, he never will. But even if he does, I want you to try to train him away, whether he does or whether he doesn't. He has more fumbles this this season than touchdowns. Can you believe that? That's crazy. One fumble lost and no touchdowns. Madison has a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown on the season already. So I'm a little bit worried about that usage, even though in the preseason, a lot of the coaching staff was talking about getting Zamir White the ball a lot. I'm really concerned about Zamir White. And While I talk about all these players, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a post on Patreon this week telling you guys trade targets, and I'm going to update that post next week after week three. So if you guys want my advice and you're like, John, okay, you're saying panic on a lot of these guys, but who do I trade them for? Definitely head over to Patreon. All you have to do is be in at least tier one, and you'll get access to all my posts and all my trade thoughts. I'm going to give you guys players to trade, players to keep, players to sell high, buy low, things like that. So definitely head over to Patreon if you want to know who to trade Zamir White for. Also, the other running back is Rashad White. I kind of leaked that a little bit before, but I'm worried about Rashad White. The the reason, yeah, he had 16.3 fantasy points in week one and he was involved in the pass game, but in week two, he had 3.3 points. He suffered a groin injury, which I don't think will keep him out too long, but Bucky Irving also got 18 touches in the first two weeks of the season. Not only that, but this this uh, Buccaneers offense has some tough matchups on the ground in the next few weeks. They play Denver, Philadelphia, Atlanta, New Orleans, Baltimore, and Atlanta again. Those are good run defenses. So the only way that Rashad White will have fantasy value is if he catches a lot of passes out of the backfield and that he has solid, you know, workhorse back numbers and volume. And I don't think that's going to happen with Bucky Irving there. So I would trade Rashad White for a guy like Tony Pollard. So I'm kind of leaking my advice there, my trade advice, but definitely head over to Patreon to get more solidified and more exclusive and extensive advice. Now moving on to receivers. There's four receivers that I'm going to talk to you guys about. And let's see, I have two of them as panic and two of them as patience. The first player I want to talk about is Garrett Wilson. Now, if you have Garrett Wilson, you probably drafted him with either your first or second pick, and you're probably a little bit disappointed so far. 12 points in week one, even though on the one of the opening drives, he looked great going from catching passes from Aaron Rodgers. But last week, he only had 10.2 points. He had 11 targets, then six targets, so a little bit less against the Titans. But the problem is that he had two tough matchups. Week one against the 49ers, they have a good defense. And then week two, you know, the Titans secondary is underrated. It wasn't good last season, but they got Legereus Sneed, which is a shutdown cornerback from the Chiefs last season who won the Super Bowl. And he was great. If you guys remember, he was shutting down Jefferson. He was shutting down A.J. Brown in the regular season. And it's tough to score and get points on him. So Garrett Wilson getting 10.2 points against Legereus Sneed. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I think that's a very tough matchup. And Wilson has great matchups coming up. So his second half of the season, he has great matchups. Be patient with Garrett Wilson. Don't sell him low. Definitely hold on to Garrett Wilson. Another player is Amari Cooper. I would also be patient on him. Now, I know you're like, John, he got 3.6 points in week one, 4.1 in week two. Deshaun Watson looks like he can't even grip the ball. I mean, they, they don't, they're not even on the same page. I mean, Watson's not even getting it close to Amari Cooper. I hear you. But the next four weeks, Amari Cooper has great matchups. He plays the Giants, the Raiders, the Commanders, and the Eagles. All four of those are bottom 10 defenses and bottom five pass defenses for the the Raiders are bad pass defense. The Commanders are probably the worst pass defense. And then the Eagles are probably the second worst pass defense. So great matchups for Amari Cooper. He's going to produce in these four weeks. Don't worry. I have full confidence in him. I wouldn't start him this week against the Giants just because I want to see him and Deshaun Watson and connect a little bit first, but then against the Raiders, maybe against the commanders, 
watch out. He might be a weekly pick that week against the commanders if I see some good things between him and Deshaun Watson in the next couple weeks. But the good thing about Amari Cooper is he got nine targets in week one, eight targets in week two. So even though Deshaun Watson's missing him, he's trying to get Amari Cooper the ball a lot. So I would keep Amari Cooper for now. Now, two players and two receivers that I would panic on Tank Dell and Christian Kirk. I'm going to start with Christian Kirk because it's probably one of the more obvious panic buttons that you're hitting. I mean, Christian Kirk wasn't going as a top receiver, but we all thought that he was the top receiver on the Jaguars, and it's quickly become Brian Thomas Jr. And I know Evan Engram didn't have a good week one, and we, in week two, Evan Engram was a late player to be ruled out before the game. But even then, with Evan Engram out, Christian Kirk still didn't really get the ball. And it was against the Cleveland Browns, who the Jaguars were trailing, and they had to throw the ball, and they were throwing it to other people not named Christian Kirk. So I'm really worried about Kirk's fantasy production for the rest of the season. He had four points in week one, 0.9 points in week two, one catch in each game. He's totally uninvolved. They're not even creating plays for him. Doug Peterson isn't doesn't even have this guy in the game plan. They're like, they're creating plays during the week and Christian Kirk is in the back of the room. He's not even like being talked about. It's amazing. And maybe that turns around, but I would not put him in my lineup until I saw it and I believed it with my own eyes because I'm really worried about Kirk. And if you have him, he's almost droppable at this point. Now, I wouldn't drop him yet because it's only week two. We don't want to overreact too much. But if he has a good game, maybe see what people think about him. Maybe try to package him in a deal. If he has two good games, maybe package him in a deal as well. I mean, I would try to get this guy off of my team as soon as possible because it's clear that Brian Thomas Jr. is honestly a better fantasy option than Christian Kirk right now. And now going to Tank Dell, I would panic, but I'm not hitting the panic button as hard as I am for Christian Kirk. The reason is because Tank Dell has still been involved and on the field for the Texans. It's still a great offense. The thing is, we thought he would be a little bit more involved in the preseason, like going into the, the season, we were a little more optimistic on Tank Dell, even though we know there's so many options in that offense. The thing to look for is I would keep Tank Dell for now. The reason is because, he, like I said, he's still been involved in the offense, but Joe Mixon had an ankle injury. It doesn't seem like Mixon, in my opinion, is going to play this week. They're playing the Vikings. Now, you can pass against the Vikings. So what I think the Texans are going to do is throw the ball a lot. I think that Dell could have a good game this week, and then I would look to start to involve him in trade offers, see what people think about him. If Dell gets like seven catches for 80 yards and a touchdown, that's 21 fantasy points, and that's really good. Even if he just gets seven catches for 80 yards or seven catches for 60 yards and gets like 13, 15 fantasy points, that's pretty good to start those trade offers and see what you can get for him. The reason I don't like him long term is because, like I said, Nico Collins is the one, Stefan Diggs is the number two, and when Mixon is there, they're going to be using him out of the backfield as well. So the thing about Tank Dell, 8.9 points in week one, 2.3 points in week two, but he did have some rushing attempts. He had seven targets, then four targets, but in the second, in week two, when he had four targets, he also had three rush attempts. So I like that involvement. The thing is he's on the field and he's running a lot of routes. So he's out there. Stroud's just not looking at him yet. Now that will change because defenses will shift coverage towards Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs, which will open up Tank Dell. So don't completely panic yet because the thing is, it's just a matter of time before Tank Dell has an eight catch, 100 yard and a touchdown game, which is 24 fantasy points. It's just a matter of time before that happens. We just got to wait for that to happen and then maybe start to involve him in trade talks. Even preseason, I was telling you guys that I'm not drafting Tank Dell on any, money, any, any of my teams just because of that inconsistency. It's tough to predict when one of these types of players will go off and you can put him in your flex, which is why I just stayed away from him in general. I like to draft for consistency. Now I'm going to move to the last last position group, which is tight end. And I kind of hinted before that I would talk about Sam Laporta and I'm hitting the panic button on Laporta. The reason is because Jamison Williams has really stepped up in this offense and taken on a bigger role. They're getting him the ball a lot. And it seems like he's taking the role that Laporta had last season, which was second to Amonra St. Brown. St. Brown had a great game in week two after having a dud in week one, but Laporta still wasn't involved. 8.5 points in week one, 3.3 in week two. And it depends on you know the build of your team and the situation that your fantasy team is in. Now, if you're two and zero and you have a lot of other good pieces, you probably don't need a trade Laporta. You could be like, all right, I'm fine because I'm two and zero, so he hasn't really affected me yet. The other parts of my team are solid, so I don't need a trade Laporta for you know another solid player. So I'm just going to keep keep Laporta, and that's totally fine. I'd be fine with that. But because of all the injuries that have happened, there's been so many injuries in week one and week two. 
I think that you guys probably need to trade Laporta away. Now, hopefully you could find a trade partner in your league that still likes the name Sam Laporta because of what he did last season. He was the f- overall tight end one last season. So hopefully you could find somebody that still likes Laporta and sees the upside. If you can't, just wait until Laporta has a good week or two because it's only a matter of time. Like Tank Dell, Laporta was the number one tight end in fantasy. So he's not going to fall off the face of the earth. He's going to get, he's going to have like that 60 yard touchdown game or 45 yard two touchdown game that Laporta had a bunch of times last season. He's going to have that. We just need to wait for it. So you might need to wait until this week. You might need to wait until next week um, for that to happen. Hopefully it happens this week and it could because they're playing the Cardinals, which could be a high scoring game. But once that happens, depending on the build of your team and the situation you're in and who your backup tight end is, you might want to do that trade. Now, one thing I will say is in one of my 12 man leagues, I have Zach Ertz in at my tight end spot. And he's gotten me, I think, five points in week one and eight points in week two. And I'm two and oh, like that's totally fine for me, getting five points and eight points. And Zach Ertz is one of those guys you can easily just pick up. And I could even stream a tight end depending on the matchup. Hunter Henry was available in that league. I'm sure everybody's going to waiver for him now. But what my point is, is that I would not draft tight ends early. And yeah, you're probably sitting here. You're like, John, I already drafted Laporta. It's too late. Right. But if you can trade Laporta, maybe package him with another flex receiver for like a wide receiver one, maybe a buy low guy like Chris Olave, I would do that. And then you could pick up a tight end that can just, all you're looking for is like eight points from your tight end. And that's good enough. I mean, you just want your tight end to get about what your defense gets and you're pretty happy. And I would be happy too. So Laporta, long story short, wait for him to have a couple good weeks. Unless you're super desperate, you could try to send out the feelers now, see what people think about him. But I can assure you, he will have a one, a two touchdown game. So definitely wait for that. Another player, Travis Kelsey, I am hitting the panic button, not as hard as I'm hitting the panic button for Laporta because Kelsey, you probably got in your second round. So you're probably like, I need Kelsey to like produce. He got 6.4 points in week one, 1.6 in week two, four targets, then three targets, which is concerning because he's not really super game planned in this offense. Now they do play the Falcons this week. Hopefully that opens things up. Hopefully they pass a little bit more with Pistachio being out. Hopefully they also pass a little bit more. Like Laporta, Kelsey will have a great game. He, d- he doesn't look like he's fallen off the face of the earth. He doesn't look like he's lost a big step, like taking a big step back in the offseason in terms of how fast he is. So he's still a good tight end. He's not a great tight end. Like I said, hopefully, I mean, honestly, what I would do if I had Kelsey, and I'm giving you guys a little bit of trade advice here, but maybe I would take Kelsey and trade him to a team that has a guy like either Evan Engram or Dalton Kincaid because those two tight ends have not played well yet, but I think they have high upside for the rest of the season. So you're probably like, John, why would I ever trade Kelsey for like Evan Engram or Kincaid? No, you wouldn't. But if you trade Kelsey and a guy like Terry McLaurin, you can get maybe Dalton Kincaid and either Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave or somebody in that vicinity. You see what I'm saying? So take a downgrade at tight end, which in my opinion, isn't much of a downgrade. You're kind of taking a downgrade because of the current value of Kincaid and Engram, but you're taking the downgrade for the potential upside of one of those tight ends. And then you're also upgrading your receiver from Terry McLaurin to like a Chris Olave or even a Garrett Wilson if somebody's that low on it. So that's some trade option that I would do. Now, the other tight end that I was going to talk about is Dalton Kincaid. And I would be patient on Kincaid. And I know the Bills have a, have a lot of options in that offense, and it's going to change each week. Kincaid won't be super consistent, but I'm honestly a little surprised with his lack of usage in the first couple games, especially with how good of a, of a tight end he was down the stretch in fantasy last season. But he had 2.1 points in week one. It came up in week two, 7.3. So I see the offensive coordinator trying to get him the ball a little bit more. They're spreading the ball around, but he doesn't have the prestige to be able to sell him low. So I would just keep Kincaid if you have him. I have him in one of my leagues and I'm keeping him. I'm super happy with having him. Um, He does have pretty good matchups with Baltimore in week four and the Texans in week five. I think in both of those games, the Bills are going to have to throw and that middle of the field should be decently open. I mean, you're going to have to pass against the Texans and the Ravens because both of them have good run defenses. So I don't think James Cook will be too much of a factor. So Allen will have to drop back and pass. Plus the Ravens and Texans have good offenses, so it should be a high higher scoring game, which will lead to Kincaid having more opportunities. So I would just wait for him. I wouldn't even be looking to trade him if he had like next week had 
10 points and then the next week at 13 and 15, I'd be like, all right, I'm keeping him. I would keep Kincaid because you probably drafted him in like the fifth or sixth round. So you'd probably want to keep him unless you're getting a good option. It depends what trade offers come through, of course, but I would lean towards keeping Kincaid. Thank you guys so much for joining John's Fantasy Football Show for this week. Now, if you guys aren't subscribed, you got to hit that subscribe button. And if you guys didn't come over from TikTok, definitely go over to our TikTok because I go live every Sunday for an hour before the game starts on TikTok from 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time to 12.45 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's where I give all my advice. It's a super fun show to just come and hang out, and if you guys want my personalized advice, trade advice, any advice throughout the season, throughout the week, head over to Patreon. I make posts of players to keep, sell low, buy high, buy low, all everything, literally everything you could think of. That's the advice that I give on Patreon. Plus, if you're in tier two, you can message me. You could tell me who your team is, the other teams in your league, and I could help you make trades throughout the week and throughout the season. And of course, guys, please don't get discouraged. It's only week two. I know a lot of ple- people are dealing with injuries. It's not just your fantasy team. And you might be worried because you're dealing with more injuries than others, but don't worry. McCaffrey will be back. Pistachio will be back. Jefferson, Cup, Mixon, Walker, Debo. I mean, I can't even imagine all these players getting hurt, but they are. Tua, they're all going to come back, guys. Don't worry. It will happen. But until then, stay with me here on YouTube, on TikTok, on my Patreon, and I will help you get through this. Thank you guys for coming on the show today and spending your day with me. I will see you guys next time.